In Back in History, we take you back in time to the events that took place in the past. On this mission, we present stories of joy and also present stories that brought tears to the eyes of survivors and shook humanity to its very foundation. The Zakibiam story is one of such stories that one would pray it never happened at all, but it happened. Soldiers of the Nigerian army were ambushed in Zakibiam in Benue state of Nigeria and killed. The number of soldiers killed was staggering, 19 in all. And in what had all the trappings of an organized retaliation, Zaki Biam was invaded by the army and scores of humans, most of them innocent people, were killed. Houses were brought down and Zaki Biam was reduced to a ghost town and to ground zero. In this edition of Back in History, we take you back in time to the month of October 2001 when Zaki Biam and the environs were reduced to a theater of the absurd. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. Benue State is one of the 36 states that make up the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is located in the middle belt of the country. It is a state with several ethnic groups. Two of these ethnic groups are the Jokun and the Tif. For several years, people from these two ethnic groups have waged bitter wars against each other. They mostly fight over land, indigenship, economic power, and political power. At every time these communal clashes occur, security agents in Nigeria, including soldiers, have mostly been deployed to restore peace and order to the affected communities. In the course of such interventions, some persons began to accuse the military of taking sides. This was the beginning of a deep-seated sense of hatred and dislike for the army in a number of communities. The accusations were not proven with concrete facts, but to the locals, the accusations were true. This is how they nurtured the animosity against the army. Not many people knew how it was going to play out, but there was certainly that lack of trust. At the dawn of democracy in 1999, Theophilus Danjuma, a retired army general, was Nigeria's Minister of Defense. Danjuma is Jukun by tribe. Victor Malu, also a retired army general and former Ekomo commander, a thief by tribe, had, on a number of occasions, accused the chief of defense staff of giving military support to the Jukuns to fight the thief people. There was indeed the real atmosphere of suspicion, and as stated earlier, not many people knew how it was going to play out. On the 8th day of October 2001, 35 thief people were killed, and in most cases, they were burned in their houses in Ibi local government area. The act was carried out by suspected militia men. Following the killings, soldiers were deployed to stop the killings and restore peace. On the 10th of October 2001, the soldiers were ambushed and captured by some militia men in the town of Vasi. Some reports say that the soldiers may have been charmed traditionally. They were led away to a secret location and two days after their capture, the bodies of the soldiers were discovered near a primary school in the nearby town of Zakibia. Their bodies were dismembered and the gory pictures were circulated by the killers. It was a terrible moment for the Nigerian army. It was a terrible moment for Nigeria as a country. It was unimaginable. When the head count was carried out, no fewer than 19 soldiers were killed. A dark cloud had just encircled Benue State, and life was never going to be the same again. The first thing the military did was to recover whatever was remaining of the bodies of the slain soldiers. The bodies were moved to Abuja, and a date was fixed for their interment at the National Cemetery. On 22nd October 2001, the 19 soldiers were given state funeral at Abuja. At the funeral, President Olusha Gunobasanjo told the gathering that orders had been given out to the military to fish out those responsible. While President Olusha Gunobasanjo, the Minister of Defense Theophilus Danjuma, and the Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Alexander Gumudia 
were all still at the funeral of the 19 soldiers, terror was unleashed at the same time on Zakibiam and the surrounding communities as revenge for the killing of the soldiers. Several persons were killed. Obviously, the killers of the 19 soldiers had fled and the victims of the reprisal attacks were persons who may not have known anything about the elimination of the soldiers. Altogether, seven towns were raided by the soldiers. This included Zakibiam, Te Ado, Vase, Sankera, Anyin, and Kiado. On the second day, several civilians were killed and houses were demolished in Zakibiam, Te Sado, Sankere, and Kiado. On 24th October, they rounded off with a return to Zakibiam, Te Sado, and Kiado. The soldiers, according to eyewitnesses, numbered between 200 and 300 and rode in armored tanks and military vehicles. For fear of being killed, locals deserted other villages on hearing the news of what had happened in other locations and the military on arrival destroyed such villages. This was what happened at Anyin where nobody was killed but properties were destroyed. There was blood everywhere and no gender nor age bracket was spared. The action of the army was seriously criticized by civil liberty organizations, human rights activists, journalists, legal practitioners, and several other persons. Of the most concern was the fact that the persons who carried out the killings could not have been around the community anymore at the time of the reprisal attacks. It was obviously the innocent civilian populace that bore the brunt of the reprisal. The army denied any involvement in the massacre. This was the official position of the army. But for the people of Zakibiam and the other places that were invaded, the massacre was done by the military and the official position made no sense to them. The killing of the 19 soldiers was indeed a condemnable act, but the revenge killings were worst. More people were killed, most of them completely innocent of whatever took place. When the pressure on the military and on Obasanjo's government kept mounting, President Obasanjo constituted a panel of inquiry headed by Justice Okechuku Okbene. The panel sat and received memoranda from the people of Zakibiam and other communities. The panel submitted its report on 9th April 2003. However, the white paper of the report was not released to the public throughout the tenure of President Olusegun Obasanjo. Many believe that the report may have portrayed the military and the government in bad light, hence the decision to keep it away. The official position by the military remained so for several years, namely that the return massacre of Zakibiam and the environs was not done by the officers and men of the Nigerian army, that the people that may have been seen in military uniforms were impostors and that the military is innocent of all the allegations. Months after the massacre, a thief activist Alexander Gadi led 13 other victims with a team of lawyers including Mr. Sebastian Tahon, now senior advocate of Nigeria, Ocha Elegede, and Chris Alashi sued the federal government of Nigeria at the Federal High Court, Enugu Division. They demanded 200 billion naira as compensation for the assault. The case, which was decided on 5th July 2007 by Justice Lewis Alagoa, awarded them the sum of 41.8 billion naira. The federal government of Nigeria appealed the case to the Court of Appeal Enugu Division, but later on applied to settle the matter out of court. President Umaru Musayar Adwa became the president of Nigeria after the tenure of President Olusha Gunobasanjo. As Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federation of Nigeria, Yaradwa appears to have looked differently at the Zakibiam situation. He may have gone through the official records of government and, in his response to the situation, he decided that an apology should be made to the people of Zakibiam. On 6th November 2007, the then Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Luka Yusuf, publicly offered an apology to the people of Benue State 
for the killings. Soon thereafter, President Umaru Musayiradua visited Benue State to personally apologize on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria. The Zakibiam story remains till date a sore point in the contemporary history of Nigeria. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in Istran. Do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notification on every new video. I remain your friend and host, Kemi Dim, wishing you the best of time as we continue to journey together on this historical endeavor.